All right, welcome back to the Moment Soul 2 Experience Radio Show Live here on Philly Hot Radio on our Woman Soul 2 Facebook page, Instagram Live. One of my guests is here. She's a, um, um, a speaker, a trainer, an author, a therapist, um, um, specialist, advocate mental health. So, um, let's welcome Miss Tyra Gardner. So, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Levi? I'm good. Yourself? How, how was your week? How was oh, your... The week's been great. It was a good week. It was a little long, but it was good. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. That sounds good. So, before we delve into who you are as a person, which I, I, what made what made you become a therapist and African mental health, mm-hmm. our theme for this month is COVID-19 one year later and how the COVID-19 virus has impacted people in negative ways and also good ways, you know. Um, so I want to ask for you, how has COVID-19 impacted your life in the past year? Uh, well, it impacted my life because this past year I had to cancel a lot of business trips, cancel a lot of um, traveling events that I had going on, things that I wanted to do for personal as well as business. And so, you know, so in that retrospect, it was pretty difficult, you know, altering, you know, the schedules and stuff that I had um, already planned because I was like so looking forward to doing so many, you know, big things. But in the end, it was just like, all right, let me just you know, calm down and just refocus everything that refocus my energy to everything else that I have going on. Um, in regards to family, my family has been blessed that we um, haven't lost any of our, you know, loved ones to COVID. You know, I had a loved one that did pass away, but it wasn't COVID related, you know, so that's, you know, a really good thing, you know, that we've had, you know, with my family with COVID. But other than that, um, it has been a trying time, you know, for so many, but as a therapist, you know, this past year, you know, it was, it, it was, it was really, um, it really allowed me to start resetting and recharging mm. a lot of the things that I needed to do personally as well as professionally. All right. So what things you learned about yourself in this past year that you would have not learned if, if the world was normal a year ago? Oh my gosh! What have I learned in the past year? About yourself. Ooh, okay, so <laughs> that's where I learned <laughs> in the world it was, it was normal. Like. Okay, so what I learned about myself this past year is that I have more patience than what I thought I had. Um, you know, being specialized in anger management, I know how to keep myself calm. Mm. You know, and I learned how to you know use my gifts gifts to be able to help others. Um. You know, I you know I I, I increased my faith in God mm-hmm. during this last twelve months. You know, it was you know because of everything that was happening, but for the most part, you know, um, it was a lot of self discovery. Mm. You know, I think for everyone, if you did not come out of this pandemic learning anything about yourself, then you know I don't I don't know you know at this point. What what they need to do because everybody should have learned at least one thing about one, themselves one thing, during yeah. this whole time, you know. And for me, I learned that my patience. I learned, you know, that I can use my own tools, mm-hmm. even though I was using them anyway. I learned I can use my own tools to keep my anger down. Right, <laughs> right, <laughs> in, right. In addition to, you know, I learned that, you know, I learned the importance of, you know, having a close knit family mm-hmm. and the importance that family does play in our lives because I think sometimes people lose sight of that as well as the definition of family. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Because family is who you choose. Relatives is by blood. And that's one thing that I did see, you know, that I learned for myself, you know, because at this point it was just like when you look at everything that we all experienced during COVID-19 and this whole pandemic, we were at, we as a, as humans were at our lowest. You know, and so during this time, it was like I was able to, you know, get myself together, see who was for me and who was against me. And at that point, it was like, okay, now it's time to start moving those those people out of your lives during that time. So that was another thing I learned during this past year. Wow. That's, yeah, yeah the family, that's a big part. You find out who your friends are, who your, friend, who your frenemies are. You find out your oh, time. Oh, gosh, yeah. Frenemy is a big thing. <laughs> Frenemy is a real big thing. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? And it's so funny, LeVon, because one statement that used to tick me 
off was when people would run around and say, no new friends, no new friends. Oh, no, we don't need no new friends. And I used to be like, if you don't have new friends and new people in your circle, then you're going to stay where you're at. Right. You know, and it's like at this point, you should be trying to elevate and do what you can to build yourself up and frequent with, you know, familiarize yourself with new people. Mm -hmm. You know, I have met so many new people, you know, um, on social media platforms that it was ridiculous. I mean, some people I consider friends. Some of them I consider, you know, new family, Mm -hmm. you know, new family members, you know, so Mm -hmm. that, that, that front of me is, is real. Mm. (laughs) Yes, it is. So, so let's get back to the topic at hand. So who is Tyra Gardner? Oh my gosh. Tyra Gardner is a serial entrepreneur. Tyra Gardner is a psychotherapist, speaker, author, licensed nail technician, uh, training, oh my God, training coordinator, uh, what else? Oh my gosh, I do a plethora of things. Mm-hmm. Um, Tyra Gardner is a, a strong woman with a lot of ambitions and goals, um, whose purpose is to help people understand who they are, help them with self identity, help them with when they are in crisis. Tyra Gardner is is I guess. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Tyra is Tyra is the ultimate woman. That's what I would say about myself. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many other words I would say, but I keep it there. <laughs> right. So one of the one of the big things you say what you talked about, you are a therapist and ang- anger. So what was your what was your life what was your life like growing up? And like what led you to the path of I don't want to be a therapist specializing in anger? Um you know what, my life growing up, I had a pretty good life. You know, I came I, I was raised in a two parent household. And um, my mom and dad, they both, they didn't put no more on me than what I could handle, you know? And it was, like, so funny because I asked them one time, I was like, what did y'all want me to be when I grew up? And their response was a productive citizen. I said, well, what the hell is that? They said, (laughs) one that don't go to jail. And I said, one that don't go to jail and sit around here and have a bunch of babies on and leave them here and go do your thing. And I was just like, oh, okay, so that's a a non-productive citizen? Well, no, we're not saying they're non-productive, but we're saying that's not allowed in our house. And so as long as you do what you're supposed to do, obey the laws, don't get no trouble, you are right with us. And I said, oh, okay. You know, so what led me to become a therapist, actually, I set out to be an attorney. Oh, wow. I did not set out to be a therapist. That's number one. Um, it kind of fell on me. When I graduated from undergraduate, I went to Morris Brown College in Atlanta. HBCU. <laughs> and when I graduated from Morris Brown, my goal was to go to law school. But I was like everyone else, when you finish school, oh, I'm going to take me a year off. So I decided to take a year off. Oh my gosh, Levon, why did I take that year? That year turned into two years and the three years, and I was like, oh, good Lord. I didn't end up going to law school. I was actually working as a bachelor's level therapist at University of Pennsylvania. Well, it was Presbyterian at the time, at a program for uh, senior citizens. Mm-hmm. And so as I was working in this program, I found that I, you know, I, I liked working in the program. You know, it was, it was pretty good. And so, um,. I worked there until I was laid off, and when I got laid off, that was time to start, you know, just determining which way I was going to head, right. but I was actually laid off from that job twice, so the first time I got laid off, I decided to live my best life during that time frame, and I was traveling to New York, and I was doing the damn thing, I was partying it up, okay, <laughs> I party party, okay, right. and, um, and I was like, alright, I went back to work, was working as a therapist again, and I got re got hired back at my job, and now it was under University of Penn. So when I started working there, I um was like, oh, I guess this therapy thing must be for me, you know. When I got back into it, and it was like every way I tried to move, like I, I started teaching college, and mm-hmm. then I started going teaching at the school district, and I did all these different things, but it all led me back into therapy. Mm. And so that's when I, you know, ask God, I'm like, what am I supposed to do? What is my niche? Where am I supposed to be at right now? And that's when, you know, it came, you know, to me, you know, through prayer and everything that this is the field that I'm supposed to be in. I'm supposed to help people this way, Mm. you know, and that's when I, you know, embraced being a therapist because I didn't want to embrace it, you know, because I know I was destined for, I'm like, I'm destined for bigger things than this, you know, but I'm like, I had to 
welcome being a therapist at this point. You know, mm-hmm. and I was just like, and once I embraced it and felt comfortable with it, that's when I made the decision. I said, okay, this is, you know, this is it. This is what I need to do. So I need to master my craft. Right. So your master your craft was come, was a psycho anger therapist. Yeah, that's can you, what, yeah, can, yeah, can you tell us what that is and yeah, why did why, you start that? Tra- okay, why did I become an anger management specialist? Yeah, that's what I was going, yeah. Okay, so I became an anger management specialist because what happened was, a couple of friends called me and was like, yo, you need to do this anger thing. And we started laughing about it. I was like, man, shut up. I ain't doing that. And so, <laughs> and so as we sit there talking and laughing about it, that's when I was just like, you know what? Maybe they on to something. So mm-hmm. at the same time, my friends was approaching me about it. The hospital was approaching us about it. Now, then fast forward, I'm working at another hospital in South Jersey at the time. Gotcha. And they're coming at all the staff. You need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. So we look up. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to let y'all pay for it. I'm going to pay for it myself because, see, when you let your job pay for some things, they feel like they can control you. Okay. So I'm not letting nobody control me. So I said, all right, well, let me go ahead and do my thing. So I go ahead and I take the classes, do everything I needed to do to come, become certified. In the process of that, now, I always had a little anger. Like, I would, like things would happen to cause me to become angry. But I didn't look at it like I had a problem. Mm-hmm. And then when I, as I was taking the classes, I was like, you know what? Damn, I got a touch of anger too. Mm. And at this point, I'm like, the difference between me and everybody else is I didn't get caught. And I said, you know, I said, so now it's time for me to take a step back, look at my own life, and start looking at how I can better myself with the tools that I learned. And so as I learned a lot with doing anger management, I started learning a lot about others Mm -hmm. and being able to work how I can help others with maintaining their anger and not having any issues when they are in situations that come up. Okay, so is is your clients mostly women or men or children or in terms of anger management, that do you do all that? Right now I have I all my clients is pretty much everyone. Okay. You know, so I have a mix of clients. Um, but in regards to kids, I said I'm only sticking with teenagers, so I have like a few teenagers. Okay. But for the most part, is a um, pretty much is everyone, women, men, um, people in business. It you know just whatever whatever's going on, you have an episode or something going on that you need to talk about. You know, I'm I'm the person that you you can come to to talk to about those issues. So, let me answer your question. Now, this is kind of personal. So, um, with me, I get frustrated easily. I get irritated easily by people. Mm-hmm. Um, by certain things that, maybe not the words, but mm-hmm. how they say it to me. Mm-hmm. And I and I kind of shut down. I get defensive. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not anger. I when I talk loud. You know, I talk loud to people. So, what advice would you give, give to me going forward? Okay. So, the one issue is a lot of black Women and men, because we are boisterous mm-hmm. when it comes to expressing things. Number one, we're passionate. Okay. Okay. That's what. That's one thing we're gonna say about how we, you know, verbalize our stuff. So we're not gonna take the stigma of being the angry black man or the angry black woman. We're okay. not gonna do that. We're gonna alleviate that stigma because that's not. That's what the other folks mm-hmm. say about us. That's not what it really is. So what we're gonna do is when you find yourself. At a boiling point and someone is, you know, someone saying something and you're feeling like you need to, you know, verbalize it. I want you to, you know, close your eyes for a minute. Count to 10. I want you to take a deep breath. Survey the situation. Think before responding. Okay. You know, because a lot of time when we get into the heat of the moment, we don't think before we respond. We just go right in. Mm, you know, and right. the, the bottom line is you don't want to respond on that, on that anger emotion. Because when you respond on that anger or emotion, it causes other issues. Right, because I, because with me, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I admit to that, I'm very emotional. Mm-hmm. Like I, I like cry, but I'm very like emotional slash passionate mm-hmm. a lot of times. So I'm trying to balance that out because sometimes I get, I get emotional, I get hot, like yeah, yeah, I get not hot tempered, but I get like frustrated. Right. So I'm trying to figure out how to navigate that how to because I'm about to get married now I'm trying to mm-hmm. learn how to deal with my future wife and her her passion you know what I mean mm-hmm. so like so it's like sometimes it's not the word she says it's, it's like how she says it 
So like, like, like so like, I, I, I get the words, I get the words, but the way you say it, like the, the tone and the demeanor, I'm gonna shut down. Right. right. So. Right. But so. then it's also being able to sit down the two of you and talk about how you want to address situations with right. your marriage. Mm-hmm. You know, like, um, you know, with, you know, sometimes people scream, sometimes people yell, you know, honey, I don't want to do that. This is not how I want to, you know, communicate. I want us to be able to do X, Y, and right. Z right. and being able to spell it all mm-hmm. out. And it's okay to write stuff down. Mm. You know okay. what I mean? Relationship contracts is good. Mm. You know, when you have that relationship contract, what are you what can we work towards together? What am I willing to accept? What I'm, I'm not, not willing to accept. Because this at this point the two of y'all will be able to have it already identified and you're able to move forward to be happy in your relationship without having all these issues because you already know what she wants and she mm. knows what you want. Gotcha. Okay. So, so, so that, so obviously in this question you talk about, I said, you say it was an author. Mm-hmm. So, so what made you become an author? Yes. What, what made you Oh become? my gosh. Because you know what? It was just like, I felt as though maintain, my book is called Maintaining Good Mental Health. Mm, so, okay. and I meant to bring copy with me. Yeah. I forgot it. <laughs> oh man. That's a... And so Maintaining Good Mental Health is a e-workbook. And so what it is, is it's a guide to help people understand mental health Mm. help them understand themselves mentally physically spiritually it's a guide to help people feel to realize if they even need to you know start seeking out mental health you know seeking out services for mental health because sometimes people are really like unaware of what they want to do and like people you know will listen to others telling them oh you need a therapist something wrong with you and as soon as they say that they go maybe i do and they'll go and they'll grab a therapist and, you know, go out and seek for therapy. And then next thing you know, is a, is an issue. Right. Um, you know, and so when that happens, that's when... Oh, oh man. <laughs> and so when that happens... Hello, we're going to turn to a spirit show. Oh, hello? Okay, I forgot to call. <laughs> so that's so like, we have a call and call. And yeah, call. you never know. Yeah, it was the same thing. So, yeah, so with that happens, you know, people will seek out a therapist on the on the spectrum of people telling them you need to go see a therapist. Right. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, a lot of these people go seek out these therapists and they're not ready. Mm. They're not ready for therapy and they made themselves ready because somebody told, told else them, told told them, them they right. was ready. And so with that being said, we need you to know that you're ready for yourself to seek out help. Right. Because when you come to a therapist and you're not ready, you're not going to show up for the sessions. You're not going to be your authentic self. Mm-hmm. You what during the sessions, you're going to sit there and nine times out of 10, you're not going to verbalize what's the true problem. What is really, really happening, you know? And so, yeah. So, Hope that helps. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so my next question was, mm-hmm. what is next for Tyra Gardner? Oh my goodness, what's next for me? So, what I have going on now, um, I am writing another book. I did uh, release another book last weekend in regards to stress. Oh, and last week? Called, I am way too blessed to be stressed. I didn't do a book launch or anything. Congratulations! I Thanks! I was a speaker at a book conference this past, last weekend. And so, um, that's when I launched the book during the conference. And so, I have the book coming up. I'm also launching... Well, I've already started doing IG uh, interviews. I started my IG interviews back the beginning of COVID. Actually, actually started in February of last year. When uh, we was able to do the video capabilities, I was interviewing business owners, and so that's called Tyra's Just Saying. And so okay. I have that. That comes. I does. I do that on Sundays at six p.m. But I also have on um, Saturdays. I do it some Saturday mornings, not all, because everybody know my Saturdays be jam packed. <laughs> <laughs> And so, um, and so I do that, and then on Saturday evenings, I do um, a, a segment called The Recovery Room, mm. and that comes on around 8.30-ish, 9 o'clock, um, after the Fat Man Scoop Show that comes on IG um, Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m., so. Okay, oh, wow, so, what, so what's, what's the um, Recovery Room, what's that? So, The Recovery Room is 
is basically where I talk to to any people that come through my live about situations that they may they may be experiencing. So it started through the um, Fat Man Scoop show. He does a thing called Personal Shit Saturdays on his <laughs> IG show every Saturday evening, and so people come to his live and talk about their personal shit. You know, whatever issues that they have going on with people in their lives or if it was just something like a bit type thing people mm. like venting about things and so um the recovery room came about because there was some touchy issues that did come up right and when the live ended it's like people be caught in their feelings and so you know he was like you need to do something at the end of my show come on and talk to these people so that we can try to you know try to do something to help them you know, to get them back into a positive frame of mind. And so that's what we, that was a concept that came up after the show. Okay. You know, so that's what the recovery room is. And so I do that pretty much every Saturday, you know. But um, Tyra's just saying, that's my baby and it's been on and on and on. So. Yeah. <laughs> Two more questions. Yes. Um, how, since you do a whole lot, so you do civil entrepreneur, you talk shows, it's going live and therapy. How do how, how do you take care of yourself? Like how do you do self care? Oh my gosh. Lot. So my self care for the past, well forever is you know getting pedicures and manicures. And through this past the pandemic going on, I've you know slowed up with going to a lot of places, getting things done. So for me, self care right now is being able to meditate, mm. reading books. You know that helps me with um, self care. Also, um, oh my gosh, watching television. You know, I watch a lot of comedies okay. and things like that. So, because I love to laugh, you know, yeah, I intake yeah. so much that I have to find my outlet. And so, my outlet is through comedies and laughter. And I watch a lot of IG shows. You know, like I'm I'm on IG looking at some of the things that go on there. And so, yeah, so that's my outlet. That's how I do self care. Okay, so where people can find Tyra Gardner in terms of. Services, her book, the, the <laughs> new book just came out, and just anything in general. Yeah, so you can find me at Tyra Gardner, tyrasgardner.com. You can find me on Facebook at Tyra Gardner, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Anger Dr. Tyra. That's A N G E R D R period T Y R A. Wonderful, wonderful. And last question, last question. Um, are you taking any clients right now? Any clients? Yes. Right? Okay. I am accepting new clients. So if anybody needs any help, you could definitely feel free to contact me through the DMs or you can reach me. Um, I can give a phone number, 267-586-0640. Feel free to reach out to me. All right, wonderful. So, Dr. Tyra Gardner, thank you for being a guest on my show. Oh, it's a truly you. honor. And we got some gems and knowledge from you today. So, we got another guest coming on. At one at Jennifer Harris, so we so, so at, this will be a live and Facebook live thing. Will join us. We'll see you back in about five or ten five minutes. And I want to thank you, LeBron, for yes. having me on your show. Yes, this was awesome. I thank. knew we were supposed to do this a couple months ago. <laughs> yes, so yes. Things happen when it's supposed to happen. True. And I yes. want to thank you so much for having me on your show today. And I want to wish you a congratulations. Thank you to you and your new bride. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll see y'all shortly in a few minutes.